Lesson 4, Dynamic SQL and SQL Injection Part 1, Code Constructed Dynamically at Client One of the greatest security risks and causes of great damage to computerized systems is a hacking technique called SQL injection. By using SQL injection, hackers inject their own malicious code into statements you execute dynamically on your SQL servers, often from accounts with elevated privileges. An attacker can launch a SQL injection attack when you construct code by concatenating strings. Suppose that you provide a login screen in your client application that is designed to collect a username and password into input text boxes. You construct a procedure that verifies this information against a user's table, which you have in your database to determine whether to allow or reject the login attempt. Run this code to create the users table and populate it with two sample users. You're using this procedure to construct a query and verify the user credentials. procedure is working correctly. Entering an incorrect username or password does not log in. A hacker versed in SQL injection will very likely try to enter this inputs. The trick here is that the hacker closed the quote you opened in front of the username added the expression 1 equals 1, which will become part of the filter expression and then added the two dashes. Part 2 protecting against SQL injection. Create the second version of the procedure. This code is safer because you do not concatenate the username and user password at all. 
You use SB execute SQL with an input parameters defined for username and user password. Or even better, don't use dynamic SQL at all in such cases. Use static SQL. Part 3, Code Constructed Dynamically at Server Very common technique of passing SQL server a dynamic agreement or list of arguments using a single input string with a comma separated list of values. A hacker will know how to communicate with SQL Server by testing various code strings to check whether you constructed the code dynamically. If the code wasn't developed with security in mind, the application probably doesn't hide error messages generated by SQL Server from the user. By default, such error messages will simply show up in the browser. Now you use a union all operator and two dashes to return table information from the database. It is important to look at this code to realize how easy it is for a hacker to obtain information from your database that you did not intend to expose. You have the object ID of the user's table, so now you use union all to return column information. Now, the hacker can enter any username and password. The hacker can log into the database. The real fun begins as you inject destructive commands. Do you want to learn new skills in the fastest and most effective way? Visit learnwithvideotutorials.com